Hello, hello, and welcome to my video game sound design series on Absinthe. And in this video, what we're going to be covering is more of these oscillators. So we're going to go into FM, Ring Mod, and Fractalize so that you understand what these mean. So we'll start off with FM. By the way, I'm in the patch view up here with a new sound. So what FM is is it's known as frequency modulation. And I have a longer video explaining what this is from a previous video series. So just click the card up above if you wanna know more about FM synthesis. But basically how it works is that we have one waveform and we have a second waveform that's modulating or affecting the frequency of the first waveform. So two waveforms, one of them is affecting the frequency of the other. So pretty straightforward, but it'll be really easy to understand once I show you how this works. So right now we have a sine wave in FM mode. So if I play it, you can hear it sounds mostly like a sine wave, but it has kind of its own character to it, which is true of FM. So if I go to this mod view, this is where the FM synthesis magic sort of happens. So what we have here is our second waveform that is going to modulate or affect the frequency of the first waveform. So what we can start with is this FM index. In this first row, what that means is that how much or how deeply this first waveform is going to be affected by this second waveform. And you'll hear it in just a second. So if I hold down a key and turn this up, can hear something happening. You can hear the sound being affected. So that's pretty straightforward, but let's explain what is actually going on. So right here we have our pitch shifting mode, and I'm going to switch this to Hertz. Now what Hertz is, is that it's basically going to change our pitch based on the amount of Hertz that we choose. So right now it's 220 Hertz, we could have as many as we want. So this is basically the frequency at which we want to change the pitch. So what I'm going to do is play with this FM index and these hertz right here, and you're gonna hear this frequency of this first waveform change as I play around with this. So I'll start off with the hertz and I'll be playing around with that. So I'm gonna hold the key down. So you can hear that the frequency is changing based on this Hertz fader here. And now what I'm gonna do is play around with this FM index and you're gonna hear the depth of this pitch change. So what it's doing is that it's vibrating between an upper and lower end of our new pitch and the d depth or height or lowness of that upper and lower end of that pitch is determined by this FM index. So to make that even clearer for you, I'm gonna turn this Hertz down, even lower, let's say. Yeah, so now we can hear a clear differentiation between each waveform. We can hear it kind of bouncing up and down like it's a vibrato or a 1930s alien movie. So now what I'm going to do is play around with this FM index, and you're going to hear the upper and lower end of this pitch change. So on the lower end of the spectrum, this FM index will make it sound like it's a really subtle vibrato. And on the upper end, it's going to sound like it's bouncing between two separate notes almost. So that can create some cool sci-fi effects. It can be cheesy or it can be really cool. But FM is often used for in the video game world as something that can harken back to the Sega Genesis, sometimes Super Nintendo-ish sort of days. The Genesis had an FM chip in there, so it had a kind of metallic sound to it. And that's what we can use this for. But again, if you want more details, you can go to my FM Synthesis Basics video that I've recorded before. So ring mod is our next mode. And we saw this briefly in the massive series as well. So in our ring mod mode, basically what this does is it takes two waveforms and multiplies one by the other, giving us a unique sound in the end. So I'm gonna change waveforms. So I'll make this first one, let's say 
this one right here, this organ one. And let's make the second one this formatic B, sure. So that's the sound we have. Something kind of neat, actually. I kind of like that. So I'm going to take this, go to this mod view. And what this balance will determine is how much or how little of the affected signal we're going to hear. And uh, we're just going to pitch and play with this pitch. And you're going to hear that this waveform, this mod one, is going to be multiplied with our main one and give us a cool effect in the end. And I'll be playing with this hertz to give you that effect. <laughs> Very useful for aggressive, bell-like, cutting sorts of sounds, which was true in Massive as well. So if you need something that really cuts through, Ring Mod is your choice. Lastly, Fractalize, which is kind of the hardest to explain. What this does is it copies the waveform that you choose here onto itself over and over and over again. So it gives a pretty unique sound. Let's just go to a sine wave. And what I'll do is go to this mod view here, and you can see that it looks different from every other oscillator, or sorry, waveform that we've chosen before. You can see it says iteration and amount and displace. We'll dive more into this when we get into the wave tab up here, because then I can visually show you. But for now, basically what this is asking you is how many copies of the waveform do you want to hear over itself? So I can add up to seven copies of the sine wave all placed on top of itself. It can choose how much of that fractalize you want to hear. And displace determines where in our waveform we're recopying our current waveform to. Again, if that sounds confusing, don't worry. We'll get to it when we get to our wave tab up above. Especially in the lower end, it adds a nice amount of grit. Adds some kind of glitchy distortion to it, which I really, really like. So you can use this for that sort of effect. We'll dive more into it later because it's one of the more advanced ones. And of course, you can use this unison tab here, but because we have iterations, copying onto itself over and over. We don't have our voices option anymore, but we can still change the transposition of each of these iterations and randomize our pitch so that every time I play a key, it'll be a different pitch. So our iterations are of different pitch, but our core one is the same over and over, so it can give a cool sort of backdrop to it. All right, thank you so much for watching. That's it for this video. In the next one, we'll get to the remaining oscillators, and then we'll go on to filters, mod, all the effects, all that sort of cool stuff that will get you sound designing really in no time with some really cool effects. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, of course, subscribe. Give a new video every single week on game career stuff, sound design, all that sort of good stuff. And like the video, of course. And sign up for my newsletter. That's where I give out all my best stuff for those of you who want a career in the game industry that actually pays you well to do what you do. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.